Gandhara was an ancient state, a Mahajanapada, in the Peshawar Basin in the northwest portion of the Indian subcontinent, present-day Pakistan. The center of the region was at the confluence of the Kabul and Swat rivers, bounded by the Sulayman Mountains on the west and the Indus River on the east. The Safed Koh Mountains separated it from the Kohat region to the south. This being the core area of Gandhara, the cultural influence of Greater Gandhara extended across the Indus River to the Taxila region and westwards into the Kabul and Bamiyan valleys in Afghanistan, and northwards up to the Karakoram range. Gandhara was one of 16 Mahajanapadas large conglomerations of urban and rural areas of ancient India mentioned in Buddhist sources such as Angatara Nikaya. During the Achaemenid period and Hellenistic period, its capital city was Pushkalavati Greek, Pukaleatis modern Charsada. Later the capital city was moved to Peshawar by the Kushan Emperor Kanishka the Great in about AD 127. Gandhara existed since the time of the Rigveda c. 1500–1200 BC, as well as the Zoroastrian Avesta, which mentions it as Vakarta, the sixth most beautiful place on earth, created by Ahura Mazda. Gandhara was conquered by the Achaemenid Empire in the 6th century BC. Conquered by Alexander the Great in 327 BC, it subsequently became part of the Maurya Empire and then the Indo-Greek Kingdom. The region was a major center for Greco-Buddhism under the Indo-Greeks and Gandharan Buddhism under later dynasties. It was also a central location for the spread of Buddhism to Central Asia and East Asia. It was also a center of Bactrian Zoroastrianism and Hinduism. Famed for its local tradition of Gandhara Greco-Buddhist art, Gandhara attained its height from the 1st century to the 5th century under the Kushan Empire. Gandhara flourished at the crossroads of Asia, connecting trade routes and absorbing cultural influences from diverse civilizations. Buddhism thrived until 8th or 9th centuries, when Islam first began to gain sway in the region. Pockets of Buddhism persisted in Pakistan's Swat Valley until the 11th century. The Persian term Shahi is used by historian al Biruni to refer to the ruling dynasty that took over from the Kabul Shahi and ruled the region during the period prior to Muslim conquests of the 10th and 11th centuries. After it was conquered by Mahmud of Ghazni in 1001 AD, the name Gandhara disappeared. During the Muslim period, the area was administered from Lahore or from Kabul. During Mughal times, it was an independent district which included the Kabul province. Etymology Gandhara was known in Sanskrit as Gandhara Gandhara, in Avestan as Vaikarta, in Old Persian as Gadara Old Persian cuneiform, Gadara, also transliterated as Gandhara since the nasal n before consonants was omitted in the Old Persian script, and simplified as Gandhara in Babylonian and Elamite as Paruparezana para uparisena, in Chinese as T, Gn Tuo Luo S, Gn Tuo Luo Chianchuluo, and in Greek as Gandhara Gandhara. The Gandhari people are a tribe mentioned in the Rigveda, the Atharvaveda, and later Vedic texts. They are recorded in the Avestan language of Zoroastrianism under the name Vaikarta. The name Gandhara occurs later in the classical Sanskrit of the epics. One proposed origin of the name is from the Sanskrit word Ganda Ganda, meaning perfume, and referring to the spices and aromatic herbs which they the inhabitants traded and with which they anointed themselves. A Persian form of the name, Gandhara, mentioned in the Behistun inscription of Emperor Darius I, was translated as Paruparezana, para uparisena, meaning beyond the Hindu Kush in Babylonian and Elamite in the same inscription. In addition to Gandhara proper, the province also encompassed the Kabul Valley, Swat and Chitral. Kandahar is sometimes etymologically associated with Gandhara. However, Kandahar was not part of the main territory of Gandhara. Geography <laughs> 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 The boundaries of Gandhara varied throughout history. Sometimes the Peshawar Valley and Taxila were collectively referred to as Gandhara, sometimes the Swat Valley Sanskrit, Suvasta, was also included. The heart of Gandhara, however, was always the Peshawar Valley. The kingdom was ruled from capitals at Kapisa Bagram, Pushkalavati Charsada, Taxila, Purusapura Peshawar, and in its final days from Udabandapura Hund on the river Indus. History 
Topic: <laughs> Stone Age. Evidence of the Stone Age human inhabitants of Gandhara, including stone tools and burnt bones, was discovered at Sanghao near Mardin in area caves. The artifacts are approximately 15,000 years old. More recent excavations point to 30,000 years before the present. <inaudible> Vedic Gandhara Gandhara was an ancient kingdom of the Peshawar Valley, extending between the Swat Valley and Patohar Plateau regions of Pakistan as well as the Jalalabad district of northeastern Afghanistan. In an archaeological context, the Vedic period in Gandhara corresponds to the Gandhara grave culture. The name of the Gandharis is attested in the Rigveda RV the Gandharis, along with the Balhaikas, Bactrians, Mujavants, Angas, and the Magadas, are also mentioned in the Atharvaveda AV as distant people. Gandharas are included in the Uttarapatha division of Puranic and Buddhistic traditions. The Aitareya Brahmana refers to King Nagnajit of Gandhara who was a contemporary of Janaka, king of Videha. Mahajanapada. <laughs> <laughs> Gandhara was one of 16 Mahajanapadas of ancient India. The primary cities of Gandhara were Purusapura Peshawar, Taxasila Taxila, and Pushkalavati The latter remained the capital of Gandhara down to the 2nd century AD, when the capital was moved to Peshawar. An important Buddhist shrine helped to make the city a center of pilgrimage until the 7th century. Pushkalavati, in the Peshawar Valley, is situated at the confluence of the Swat and Kabul rivers, where three different branches of the river Kabul meet. That specific place is still called Prang from Prayaga and considered sacred. Local people still bring their dead there for burial. Similar geographical characteristics are found at site of Prang in Kashmir and at the confluence of the Ganges and Yamuna, where the sacred city of Prayag is situated, west of Benares. There are some legends in which the two rivers are said to be joined here by the underground Sarasvati River, forming a Triveni, a confluence of three rivers. However, Rigvedic texts, and modern research, suggest that the path of the Sarasvati River was very different. It ended in the ocean at Koch in modern Gurat and not at Prayag. The Gandharan city of Taxila was an important Buddhist and Hindu center of learning from the 5th century BC to the 2nd century. Gandhara is mentioned in the Hindu epics, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, as a western kingdom. In Treta Yuga, before Lord Rama, during the reigns of Muchukunda, the kingdom of Gandhara was founded by the Druhyu prince Gandhara who was the son of King Angara of Druhyu dynasty. During Ramayana time King Nagnajit who was a contemporary of Lord Rama was defeated and killed by Rama's brother Bharata and Bharata's first son Taksha established Takshasila in Gandhara kingdom on the banks of river Sindhu and Pushkara established Pushkaravati or Purushapura Pushkar in Gandharva tribe on the banks of river Saraswati after defeating and killing its king Salusha who was the father-in-law of Vibhishana. In Devapara Yuga, Gandhara prince Shakuni was the root of all the conspiracies of Duryodhana against the Pandavas, which finally resulted in the Kurukshetra War. Shakuni's sister was the wife of the Kuru king Dhritarashtra and was known as Gandhari. Gandhara was in modern Pakistan. Puskalavati, Takshasila and Purushapura were cities in this Gandhara kingdom. Takshasila was founded by Raghava Rama's brother Bharata. Bharata's descendants ruled this kingdom afterwards. During epic period it was ruled by Shakuni's father Suvala, Shakuni and Shakuni's son. Arjuna defeated Shakuni's son during his post-war military campaign for Yudhishira's Aswamedha Yagna. Achaemenid <laughs> Gandhara The main Vedic tribes remaining in the Indus Valley by 550 BC were the Kamboja, Sindhu, Taxas of Gandhara, the Madras and Kathas of the river Chenab, Malas of the river Ravi and Tugras of the river Sutlej. These several tribes and principalities fought against one another to such an extent that the Indus Valley no longer had one powerful Vedic tribal kingdom to defend against outsiders and to wield the warring tribes into one organized kingdom. The area was wealthy and fertile, yet infighting led misery and despair. King Pushkarasakti of Gandhara was engaged in power struggles against his local rivals and as such the Khyber Pass remained poorly defended. 
King Darius I of the Achaemenid Empire took advantage of the opportunity and planned for an invasion. The Indus Valley was fabled in Persia for its gold and fertile soil and conquering it had been a major objective of his predecessor Cyrus the Great. In 542 BC, Cyrus had led his army and conquered the Makran coast in southern Baluchistan. However, he is known to have campaigned beyond Makran in the regions of Kalat, Kuzdar, Panjjur and lost most of his army in the Gadrosian Desert speculated today as the Karan Desert. In 518 BC, Darius led his army through the Khyber Pass and southwards in stages, eventually reaching the Arabian Sea coast in Sindh by 516 BC. Under Persian rule, a system of centralized administration, with a bureaucratic system, was introduced into the Indus Valley for the first time. Provinces or satrapy were established with provincial capitals. Gandhara Satrapy, established 518 BC with its capital at Pushkalavati. Charsada. Gandhara Satrapy was established in the general region of the old Gandhara grave culture, in what is today Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. During Achaemenid rule, the Kharisthi alphabet, derived from the one used for Aramaic the official language of Achaemenids, developed here and remained the national script of Gandhara until 200 AD. Gandhara Kingdom, Takshila in Punjab was conquered by the Achaemenid Empire in 518 BC. During this time, King Pushkarasakti, a contemporary of Emperor Bimbisara BC of the Magadha Empire of Haryanka dynasty, was the king of Gandhara. King Pushkarasakti was engaged in power struggles against his local rivals. The Achaemenids under Darius penetrated to the region in 516 BC and annexed other parts of modern-day Punjab, Pakistan west to the Indus River and Sindh. The inscription on Darius 521 BC tomb at Nakush i Rustam near Persepolis records Gadara Gandhara along with Hindush Achendis, Sindh in the list of satrapies. By about 380 BC the Persian hold on the region had weakened. Many small kingdoms sprang up in Gandhara. In 327 BC, Alexander the Great conquered Gandhara as well as the Indian satrapies of the Persian Empire. The expeditions of Alexander were recorded by his court historians and by Arian around AD 175 in his Anabasis Alexandri and by other chroniclers many centuries after the event. Sir Mortimer Wheeler conducted some excavations there in 1962, and identified various Achaemenid remains. Topic Macedonian Gandhara In the winter of 327 BC, Alexander invited all the chieftains in the remaining five Achaemenid satraps to submit to his authority. Ambi, then ruler of Taxila in the former Hindush satrapy complied, but the remaining tribes and clans in the former satraps of Gandhara, Arachosia, Satagidia and Gadrosia rejected Alexander's offer. The first tribe they encountered were the Aspasioi tribe of the Kuna Valley, who initiated a fierce battle against Alexander, in which he himself was wounded in the shoulder by a dart. However, the Aspasioi eventually lost and 40,000 people were enslaved. Alexander then continued in a southwestern direction where he encountered the Asakanoi tribe of the Swat and Bunner Valleys in April 326 BC. The Asakanoi fought bravely and offered stubborn resistance to Alexander and his army in the cities of Aura, Bazira, Barakat, and Masaga. So enraged was Alexander about the resistance put up by the Asakanoi that he killed the entire population of Masaga and reduced its buildings to rubble. A similar slaughter then followed at Aura, another stronghold of the Asakanoi. The stories of these slaughters reached numerous Asakanians, who began fleeing to Aornos, a hill fort located between Shangla and Kohistan. Alexander followed close behind their heels and besieged the strategic hill fort, eventually capturing and destroying the fort and killing everyone inside. The remaining smaller tribes either surrendered or like the Astanoi tribe of Pushkalavati Charsada were quickly neutralized where 38,000 soldiers and 230,000 oxen were captured by Alexander. Eventually Alexander's smaller force would meet with the larger force which had come through the Khyber Pass met at Atak. With the conquest of Gandhara complete, Alexander switched to strengthening his military supply line, which by now stretched dangerously vulnerable over the Hindu Kush back to Balkh in Bactria. After conquering Gandhara and solidifying his supply line back to Bactria, Alexander combined his forces with the King Ambi of Taxila and crossed the river Indus in July 326 BC to begin the Archosia campaign. 
Alexander founded several new settlements in Gandhara, Punjab, and Sindh, and nominated officers as satraps of the new provinces. In Gandhara, Oxyartes was nominated to the position of satrap by Alexander in 326 BC. Maurya arrival to Gandhara Chandragupta Maurya, the founder of the Mauryan dynasty, is said to have lived in Taxila when Alexander captured the city. According to tradition, he trained under Kautilya, who remained his chief advisor throughout his reign. Supposedly using Gandhara and Vahika as his base, Chandragupta led a rebellion against the Magadha Empire and ascended the throne at Pataliputra in 321 BC. However, there are no contemporary Indian records of Chandragupta Maurya and almost all that is known is based on the diaries of Megasthenes, the ambassador of Seleucus at Pataliputra, as recorded by Arian in his Indica. Ambi hastened to relieve Alexander of his apprehension and met him with valuable presents, placing himself and all of his forces at his disposal. Alexander not only returned Ambi his title, and the gifts, but he also presented him with a wardrobe of Persian robes, gold and silver ornaments, thirty horses and one thousand talents in gold." Alexander was emboldened to divide his forces, and Ambi assisted Hephaestion and Perdiccas in constructing a bridge over the Indus where it bends at Hund Fox 1973, supplied their troops with provisions, and received Alexander himself, and his whole army, in his capital city of Taxila, with every demonstration of friendship and the most liberal hospitality. On the subsequent advance of the Macedonian king, Taxiles accompanied him with a force of 5,000 men and took part in the Battle of the Hydaspes River. After that victory he was sent by Alexander in pursuit of Porus, to whom he was charged to offer favourable terms, but narrowly escaped losing his life at the hands of his old enemy. Subsequently, however, the two rivals were reconciled by the personal mediation of Alexander, and Taxiles, after having contributed zealously to the equipment of the fleet on the Hydaspes, was entrusted by the king with the government of the whole territory between that river and the Indus. A considerable accession of power was granted him after the death of Philip, son of Machatas, and he was allowed to retain his authority at the death of Alexander himself 323 BC, as well as in the subsequent partition of the provinces at Triparadisus 321 BC. Later Ambi was deposed and killed by Chandragupta Maurya, emperor of the Mauryan Empire. Gandhara was acquired from the Greeks by Chandragupta Maurya. After a battle with Seleucus Nicator Alexander's successor in, Asia in 305 BC, the Mauryan emperor extended his domain up to and including present southern Afghanistan. With the completion of the empire's Grand Trunk Road, the region prospered as a center of trade. Gandhara remained a part of the Mauryan empire for about a century and a half. Ashoka, the grandson of Chandragupta, was one of the greatest Indian rulers. Like his grandfather, Ashoka also started his career in Gandhara as a governor. Later he supposedly became a Buddhist and promoted this religion in his empire. He built many stupas in Gandhara. Mauryan control over the northwestern frontier, including the Yonas, Kamboyas, and the Gandharas, is attested from the rock edicts left by Ashoka. According to one school of scholars, the Gandharas and Kamboyas were cognate people. It is also contended that the Kurus, Kamboyas, Gandharas and Balakas were cognate people and all had Iranian affinities, or that the Gandhara and Kamboja were nothing but two provinces of one empire and hence influencing each other's language. However, the local language of Gandhara is represented by Panini's conservative Basa language, which is entirely different from the Iranian language of the Kamboja that is indicated by Patanjali's quote of Kambojan Savati to go equals late Avestan Sava IT equals topic Greco Bactrians Sakas and Indo Parthians equals the decline of the empire left the Indian subcontinent open to Greco Bactrian invasions present day southern Afghanistan was absorbed by Demetrius the first of Bactria in 180 BC Around about 185 BC, Demetrius invaded and conquered Gandhara and the Punjab. Later, wars between different groups of Bactrian Greeks resulted in the independence of Gandhara from Bactria and the formation of the Indo-Greek kingdom. Menander I was its most famous king. He ruled from Taxila and later from Sagala He rebuilt Taxila and Pushkalavati. 
He became a Buddhist and is remembered in Buddhist records for his discussions with the great Buddhist philosopher, Nagasena, in the book Melinda Panha. Around the time of Menander's death in 140 BC, the Central Asian Kushans overran Bactria and ended Greek rule there. Around 80 BC, the Sakas, diverted by their Parthian cousins from Iran, moved into Gandhara and other parts of Pakistan and western India. The most famous king of the Sakas, Mauis, established himself in Gandhara. By 90 BC the Parthians had taken control of eastern Iran and, around 50 BC, they put an end to the last remnants of Greek rule in today's Afghanistan. Eventually an Indo-Parthian dynasty succeeded in taking control of Gandhara. The Parthians continued to support Greek artistic traditions. The start of the Gandharan Greco-Buddhist art is dated to about 75–50 BC. Links between Rome and the Indo-Parthian kingdoms existed. There is archaeological evidence that building techniques were transmitted between the two realms. Christian records claim that around AD 40 Thomas the Apostle visited the Indian subcontinent and encountered the Indo-Parthian king Gondafares. Kushan Gandhara The Parthian dynasty fell about 75 to another group from Central Asia. The Kushans, known as Yuji in China argued by some to be ethnically ASII moved from Central Asia to Bactria, where they stayed for a century. Around 75, one of their tribes, the Kushan Kusana, under the leadership of Kujula Kadphises gained control of Gandhara and other parts of what is now Pakistan. The Kushan period is considered the golden period of Gandhara. Peshawar Valley and Taxila are littered with ruins of stupas and monasteries of this period. Gandharan art flourished and produced some of the best pieces of sculpture from the Indian subcontinent. Many monuments were created to commemorate the Jatakas. Gandhara's culture peaked during the reign of the great Kushan king Kanishka the Great 128-151. The cities of Taxila at Sursuk and Peshawar were built. Peshawar became the capital of a great empire stretching from Gandhara to Central Asia. Kanishka was a great patron of the Buddhist faith. Buddhism spread to Central Asia and the Far East across Bactria and Sogdia, where his empire met the Han Empire of China. Buddhist art spread from Gandhara to other parts of Asia. Under Kanishka, Gandhara became a holy land of Buddhism and attracted Chinese pilgrims eager to view the monuments associated with many Jatakas. In Gandhara, Mahayana Buddhism flourished and Buddha was represented in human form. Under the Kushans new Buddhist stupas were built and old ones were enlarged. Huge statues of the Buddha were erected in monasteries and carved into the hillsides. Kanishka also built a great 400-foot tower at Peshawar. This tower was reported by Chinese monks Faxian, Song Yun, and Xuanzang who visited the country. This structure was destroyed and rebuilt many times until it was finally destroyed by Mahmud of Ghazni in the 11th century. Hephthalite invasion The Hephthalite Huns captured Gandhara around 451, and did not adopt Buddhism, but in fact, "...perpetrated frightful massacres." Mahirakula became a "...terrible persecutor," of the religion. During their rule, Hinduism revived itself and the Buddhist Gandharan civilization declined. The travel records of many Chinese Buddhist pilgrims record that Gandhara was going through a transformation during these centuries. Buddhism was declining, and Hinduism was rising. Faxian traveled around 400, when Prakrit was the language of the people, and Buddhism was flourishing. One hundred years later, when Song Yun visited in 520, a different situation was described. The area had been destroyed by the White Huns and was ruled by Laelih, who did not practice the laws of the Buddha. Xuanzang visited India around 644 and found Buddhism on the wane in Gandhara and Hinduism in the ascendant. Gandhara was ruled by a king from Kabul, who respected Buddha's law, but Taxila was in ruins, and Buddhist monasteries were deserted. <laughs> Kabul Shahi After the fall of the Sassanid Empire to the Arabs in 644, today's Afghanistan region and Gandhara came under pressure from Muslims. But they failed to extend their empire to Gandhara. Gandhara was first ruled by local kings who later expanded their kingdom onto an empire. 
Gandhara was ruled from Kabul by Kabul Shahi for next 200 years. Sometime in the 9th century the Kabul Shahi replaced the Shahi. Based on various Muslim records it is estimated this occurred in 870. According to Al-Biruni Kalar, a Brahmin minister of the Kabul Shahi, founded the Shahi dynasty in 843. The dynasty ruled from Kabul, later moved their capital to Uttabandapura. They built great temples all over their kingdoms. Some of these buildings are still in good condition in the salt range of the Punjab. Topic decline Jayapala was the last great king of this dynasty. His empire extended from west of Kabul to the river Sutlej. However, this expansion of Gandhara kingdom coincided with the rise of the powerful Ghaznavid empire under Sabuktijan. Defeated twice by Sabuktijan and then by Mahmud of Ghazni in the Kabul valley, Jayapala gave his life on a funeral pyre. Anandapala, a son of Jayapala, moved his capital near Nandana in the Salt Range. In 1021 the last king of this dynasty, Trilochanapala, was assassinated by his own troops which spelled the end of Gandhara. Subsequently, some Shahi princes moved to Kashmir and became active in local politics. The city of Kandahar in Afghanistan is said to have been named after Gandhara. According to H. W. Bello, an emigrant from Gandhara in the 5th century brought this name to modern Kandahar. Faxian reported that the Buddha's alms bowl existed in Peshawar Valley when he visited around 400 chapter 12. In 1872 Bello saw this huge begging bowl seven feet in diameter preserved in the shrine of Sultan Ways outside Kandahar. When Olaf Caro wrote his book in 1958 Caro, pp. 170-171, this relic was reported to be at Kabul Museum. The present status of this bowl is unknown. Writing c. 1030, Al-Biruni reported on the devastation caused during the conquest of Gandhara and much of northwest India by Mahmud of Ghazni following his defeat of Jayapala in the Battle of Peshawar at Peshawar in 1001. Now in the following times no Muslim conqueror passed beyond the frontier of Kabul and the river Sindh until the days of the Turks, when they seized the power in Ghazna under the Samani dynasty, and the supreme power fell to the lot of Nasir Adullah Sabuktagan. This prince chose the holy war as his calling, and therefore called himself Al-Ghazi the warrior, invader. In the interest of his successors he constructed, in order to weaken the Indian frontier, those roads on which afterwards his son Yemen Adullah Mahmud marched into India during a period of thirty years and more. God be merciful to both father and son. Mahmud utterly ruined the prosperity of the country, and performed their wonderful exploits, by which the Hindus became like atoms of dust scattered in all directions, and like a tale of old in the mouth of the people. Their scattered remains cherish, of course, the most inveterate aversion towards all Muslims. This is the reason, too, why Hindu sciences have retired far away from those parts of the country conquered by us, and have fled to places which our hand cannot yet reach, to Kashmir, Benares, and other places. And though the antagonism between them and all foreigners receives more and more nourishment both from political and religious sources. During the closing years of the 10th and the early years of the succeeding century of our era, Mahmud I Sultan and Musulman of the Turk dynasty of kings who ruled at Ghazni, made a succession of inroads 12 or 14 in number, into Gandhar, the present Peshwar Valley, in the course of his proselytizing invasions of Hindustan. Fire and sword, havoc and destruction, marked his course everywhere. Gandhar which was styled the Garden of the North was left at his death a weird and desolate waste. Its rich fields and fruitful gardens, together with the canal which watered them the course of which is still partially traceable in the western part of the plain, had all disappeared. Its numerous stone-built cities, monasteries, and topes with their valuable and revered monuments and sculptures, were sacked, fired, razed to the ground, and utterly destroyed as habitations. Topic. Rediscovery By the time Gandhara had been absorbed into the empire of Mahmud of Ghazni, Buddhist buildings were already in ruins and Gandhara art had been forgotten. After al-Biruni, the Kashmiri writer Kalhana wrote his book Rajatarangini in 1151. He recorded some events that took place in Gandhara, and provided details about its last royal dynasty and capital Uttabandapura. In the 19th century, British soldiers and administrators started taking an interest in the ancient history of the Indian subcontinent. In the 1830s coins of the post-Ashoka period were discovered, and in the same period Chinese travelogues were translated. 
Charles Masson, James Princep, and Alexander Cunningham deciphered the Karasthi script in 1838. Chinese records provided locations and site plans for Buddhist shrines. Along with the discovery of coins, these records provided clues necessary to piece together the history of Gandhara. In 1848 Cunningham found Gandhara sculptures north of Peshawar. He also identified the site of Taxila in the 1860s. From then on a large number of Buddhist statues were discovered in the Peshawar Valley. Archaeologist John Marshall excavated at Taxila between 1912 and 1934. He discovered separate Greek, Parthian, and Kushan cities and a large number of stupas and monasteries. These discoveries helped to piece together much more of the chronology of the history of Gandhara and its art. After 1947 Ahmed Hassan Dani and the archaeology department at the University of Peshawar made a number of discoveries in the Peshawar and Swat Valley. Excavation of many of the sites of Gandhara civilization are being done by researchers from Peshawar and several universities around the world. Taliban destruction of Buddhist relics Swat Valley in Pakistan has many Buddhist carvings, and stupas, and Jahanabad contains a seated Buddha statue. Kushan-era Buddhist stupas and statues in Swat Valley were demolished after two attempts by the Taliban and the Jahanabad Buddha's face was dynamited. Only the Buddhas of Bamiyan were larger than the carved giant Buddha statues in Swat near Manglore which the Taliban attacked. The government did nothing to safeguard the statue after the initial attempts to destroy the Buddha, which did not cause permanent harm. But when a second attack took place on the statue, the feet, shoulders, and face were demolished. Islamists such as the Taliban, and looters, destroyed many of Pakistan's Buddhist artifacts from the Buddhist Gandhara civilization especially in the Swat Valley. The Taliban deliberately targeted Gandhara Buddhist relics for destruction. The Christian Archbishop of Lahore, Lawrence John Saldanha, wrote a letter to Pakistan's government denouncing the Taliban's activities in Swat Valley including their destruction of Buddha statues and their attacks on Christians, Sikhs, and Hindus. Gandhara Buddhist artifacts were illegally looted by smugglers. A group of Italians helped repair the Buddha. Language. <laughs> <laughs> The Gandharan Buddhist texts are both the earliest Buddhist as well as Asian manuscripts discovered so far. Most are written on birch bark and were found in labeled clay pots. Panini has mentioned both the Vedic form of Sanskrit as well as what seems to be Gandhari, a later form of Sanskrit, in his Ashtadhyayi. Gandhara's language was a Prakrit or Middle Indo-Aryan dialect, usually called Gandhari. The language used the Karasthi script, which died out about the 4th century. However, Punjabi, Hindko, and Kohistani, are derived from the Indo-Aryan Prakrits that were spoken in Gandhara and surrounding areas. However, a language shift occurred as the ancient Gandharan culture gave way to Iranian invaders from Central Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism Mahayana Buddhism Mahayana Pure Land Sutras were brought from the Gandhara region to China as early as AD 147, when the Kushan monk Lokaksima began translating some of the first Buddhist sutras into Chinese. The earliest of these translations show evidence of having been translated from the Gandhari language. Lokaksima translated important Mahayana sutras such as the Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra, as well as rare, early Mahayana sutras on topics such as samadhi, and meditation on the Buddha Aksobhya. Lokaksima's translations continue to provide insight into the early period of Mahayana Buddhism. This corpus of texts often includes and emphasizes ascetic practices and forest dwelling, and absorption in states of meditative concentration. Paul Harrison has worked on some of the texts that are arguably the earliest versions we have of the Mahayana Sutras, those translated into Chinese in the last half of the 2nd century CE by the Indo-Scythian translator Lokaksima. Harrison points to the enthusiasm in the Lokaksima Sutra corpus for the extra-ascetic practices, for dwelling in the forest, and above all for states of meditative absorption samadhi. 
Meditation and meditative states seem to have occupied a central place in early Mahayana, certainly because of their spiritual efficacy but also because they may have given access to fresh revelations and inspiration. Some scholars believe that the Mahayana longer Sukhavadivyuha Sutra was compiled in the age of the Kushan Empire in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, by an order of Mahisasaka Bhiksis which flourished in the Gandhara region. However, it is likely that the longer Sukhavadivyuha owes greatly to the Mahasamgika Lokateravada sect as well for its compilation, and in this sutra there are many elements in common with the Lokateravadan Mahavasta. There are also images of Amitabha Buddha with the Bodhisattvas Avalokiteshvara and Mahasthamaprapta, which were made in Gandhara during the Kushan era. The Manjusramalakalpa records that Kaniska of the Kushan Empire presided over the establishment of the Mahayana Prajnaparamita teachings in the northwest. Taranatha wrote that in this region, 500 bodhisattvas attended the council at Jalandra Monastery during the time of Kaniska, suggesting some institutional strength for Mahayana in the northwest during this period. Edward Kahn's goes further to say that Prajnaparamita had great success in the northwest during the Kushan period, and may have been the fortress and hearth of early Mahayana, but not its origin, which he associates with the Mahasamgika branch of Buddhism. Buddhist translators Gandharan Buddhist missionaries were active, with other monks from Central Asia, from the 2nd century AD in the Han Dynasty 202 BC to 220 AD at China's capital of Luoyang, and particularly distinguished themselves by their translation work. They promoted scriptures from early Buddhist schools as well as those from the Mahayana. These translators included Lokaksima, a Kushan and the first to translate Mahayana scriptures into Chinese 167-186 Ji Yao c. 185, a Kushan monk, second generation of translators after Lokaksima Ji Qian 220-252, a Kushan monk whose grandfather had settled in China during 168-190 Giyu, c. 230, a Kushan monk who worked at Nanjing. Dharmaraksa, 265-313, a Kushan whose family had lived for generations at Dunhuang. Jnanagupta, 561-592, a monk and translator from Gandhara. Sixananda, 652-710, a monk and translator from Adhyana, Gandhara. Prajna, c. 810, a monk and translator from Kabul, who educated the Japanese Kakai in Sanskrit texts. Textual finds The Chinese Buddhist monk Xuanzang visited a Lokateravada monastery in the 7th century, at Bamiyan, Afghanistan. The site of this monastery has since been rediscovered by archaeologists. Birchbark and palm leaf manuscripts of texts in this monastery's collection, including Mahayana sutras, have been discovered at the site, and these are now located in the Shoyan collection. Some manuscripts are in the Gandhari language and Kharasthi script, while others are in Sanskrit and written in forms of the Gupta script. Manuscripts and fragments that have survived from this monastery's collection include the following source texts. Pratimaksa Vibhanga of the Mahasamgika Lokateravada MS 2382-269 Mahaparinirvana Sutra, a sutra from the Agamas MS 2179-44 Kamgi Sutra, a sutra from the Agamas MS 2376 Vajrashadika Prajnaparamita Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2385 Bhaisajyaguru Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2385 Sramaladevi Simanata Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2378 Pravarana Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2378 Sarvadharma Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2378 Ajatasatrakaukardiyavinodana Sutra, a Mahayana Sutra MS 2378 Sariputra Abhidharma Sastra MS 2375.08 A Sanskrit manuscript of the Prabharaha Sutra was among the textual finds at Gilgit, Pakistan, attesting to the popularity of the medicine Buddha in Gandhara. 
The manuscripts in this find are dated before the 7th century, and are written in the upright Gupta script. Art Gandhara is noted for the distinctive Gandhara style of Buddhist art, which developed from a merger of Greek, Syrian, Persian, and local artistic influences. This development began during the Parthian period 50 BC, AD 75. The Gandharan style flourished and achieved its peak during the Kushan period, from the 1st to the 5th centuries. It declined and was destroyed after the invasion of the White Huns in the 5th century. Stucco as well as stone was widely used by sculptors in Gandhara for the decoration of monastic and cult buildings. Stucco provided the artist with a medium of great plasticity, enabling a high degree of expressiveness to be given to the sculpture. Sculpting in stucco was popular wherever Buddhism spread from Gandhara, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Central Asia, and China. Timeline. C. 2300 c. 1900 BC Indus Valley Civilization C. 1900 c. 520 BC No written records. Indo-Aryan migrations. Ramayana legend says Lord Rama's brother Bharat ruled from Gandhara. C. 1500 c. 500 BC Gandhara grave culture C. 1200 c. 800 BC Gandhari people mentioned in Rigveda and Atharvaveda. C. 520 C. 326 BC Persian Empire. Under direct Persian control and or local control under Achaemenid suzerainty. C. 326 C. 305 BC occupied by Alexander the Great and Macedonian generals. C. 305 C. 180 BC controlled by the Maurya dynasty, founded by Chandragupta. Converted to Buddhism under King Ashoka 273 BC. c. 185 c. 97 BC under control of the Indo-Greek kingdom, with some incursions of the Indo-Scythians from around 100 BC. c. 97 BC, c. AD 7 Saka Indo-Scythian rule. c. 7 c. 75 Parthian invasion and Indo-Parthian kingdom, rule of commander Aspavarman. Ambi Kumar, king of Gandhara was a descendant of Lord Ragu and Prince Bharat of Kosala kingdom. c. 75 c. 230 Kushan Empire c. 230 c. 440 Kushanches under Persian Sassanid suzerainty c. 450 c. 565 White Huns c. 565 c. 644 Nezik Kingdom, ruled from Kapisa and Uttabandapura c. 650 c. 870 Kabul Shahi, ruled from Kabul c. 870-1021 Hindu Shahi, ruled from Uttabandapura c. 1032–1350 conquered and controlled by the Empire of Mahmud of Ghazni. See also History of Pakistan History of India Gandhari people Kamboyas Kashmir Smast Mahajanapadas Mankiala equals equals notes <laughs>